we've had a magnitude 4.4 earthquake followed by magnitude 3 hours later. There were both shallow earthquakes south of Salt Lake City. And we'll look at the Utah volcanoes. There are about eight or nine of them south of Salt Lake. And this is the Colorado Plateau. Keep that in mind. Colorado Plateau leading forward along, along that fault, going into Yellowstone, and then turning into Idaho. These are some of the volcanoes of Utah, as you can see. And this is the West Coast volcanoes, as you can see. You see Long Valley Caldera down there. And this is the mantle plume, the magma underneath the Baja California. It goes into Utah, up into Yellowstone, then turns west under Idaho. This is a map of the magma underneath the west coast, central Utah. You see uh, uh, Yellowstone there. And you see the east coast, even Florida has. But unfortunately, they don't have the mantle, the magma underneath the Great Lakes. That's a huge horseshoe-shaped magma mantle plume that goes into Kansas, Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas, into Texas, and then swings west. But anyway, let's take a look at the map at the maps and keep in mind the Colorado Plateau leading from Baja California straight through Utah up into Yellowstone. Let's take a look at the maps now. Berkeley and these are our two earthquakes the 4.4, 5.7 is about uh, uh, three or four miles down deep and this a few hours later about four hours later we had this three magnitude just uh, that, that's almost just as shallow. This is an area of lake of uh, the fault line in rivers, and keep in mind Cedar City, Cedar City, and let's go to our uh, Utah volcanoes now. Keep in mind Cedar City, okay, Cedar City, right there, and this is our area of our earthquakes. Where are we? Cedar City, okay, just north, northwest of, northeast of Cedar City. Northwest Cedar City, around, around, right around, northeast, Cedar, sorry, keep on saying northwest. This is it right here. And um, going out, back out, this is the Colorado Plateau that we saw before right here, under the um, border of Utah with Arizona. And um, this is, the, all these volcanoes are south of Salt Lake City. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's go in a little bit more. You can see Salt Lake City right there, right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, these are uh, supposedly uh, dormant or extinct. It doesn't mean that they never uh, will be able to have an eruption. Normal, this is a normal or dormant. This is one out of five. That's a black rock desert. This is again uh, mineral mountains. This is the Markagant Plateau Volcano, one out of five. Black Knoll Volcano, one out of five. Cindercone. And uh, this one here, Santa Clara, one out of five. And again, this is the Colorado Plateau that we saw before. Going to the shake map, this is the Colorado Plateau that we said before. This is, uh, okay, this is the Grand Canyon area and Colorado River. And if you want to go into the aerial, I flew over that when I was uh, flying from New York City to Los Angeles. It's unbelievable. I was looking at it and saying, how did the pioneers get through all this? Really, for the life of me, I have no idea how they were able to do this. Um, of course, you can't get any uh, idea of the height of the mountains, but it's just unbelievably uh, difficult. But anyway, this is beautiful. If anyone has ever gone to visit the Grand Canyon, it must be a beautiful place to see. It was beautiful even uh, from the air. Now, okay, going back to our shake map, this is it. And uh, going back to the, let's put in the fault lines. Okay, population density. Not many people living there, as you can see. And it's on fault lines. As we said before, this is the area of the Baja California mantle plume. The west, it goes into the shape of a Y. The western part goes under San Andreas Fault and the Walker Lane Fault System. This is where we have the Long Valley Caldera. This is uh, the Garlic Fault Ridgecrest where we had the 7.1 earthquake. 
And this is a Salton Sea volcanic field where we have the mud volcano, where we've had the tremendous quake swarm that we've had lately. 240 earthquakes, I think, yesterday. I made a video on that if you want to see it in the past videos from yesterday. And this is the Baja California area. That's where the mantle plume comes from, giving the magma here on the west coast, San Andreas and, and Walker Lane Fault System. And the, the arm to the east goes through here, through the uh, Arizona and uh, Utah, Salt Lake City, uh, up to here, Yellowstone, and then swings over here. You see that beautiful lava flow into Idaho, that imaginary seven. Okay, that's um, the uh, eastern part of the ma magma under there. So this is basically where we have our Utah volcanoes. As we said, not many people, how many people felt it? Let's see. Um, I think a couple of hundred, if I remember correctly. There, yeah, about 200 people said they felt it. This is the shaking of the area. As we said, not many people live there. This is the shaking of the area along the rivers. All rivers are fault lines, as we know. And uh, the yellow to green are strong to light shaking. The um, yellow to green, moderate, very light to light. Okay? So, as we said, there's not many people living there. And the Utah volcanoes, there they are. The Colorado Plateau right here, as we said before. Now, the... the uh, that's the volcano discovery. The volcanoes of Utah, eight volcanoes. Well, we, we uh, counted nine, as I remember. Now, Bald Knoll is the youngest of the group of basaltic, uh, basaltic cinder cones, southwest part of the Pan Sagant Plateau on, in southern Utah. And uh, then we have the Black Rock Desert, volcanic field of small volcanic fields. The youngest volcanic area in Utah contains both Utah's youngest known rhyolite dome, about 400,000 years old. And uh, then we have Fumarol Buttes. We have Cobol, the volcanic field in Zion National Park. It contains a chain of cinder cones, lava flows, the youngest being cinder cones in Diamond Valley. And uh, Mineral Mountain, Santa Clara, volcanic field north of St. George in southwest Utah, active uh, since about 4 million years ago. It contains numerous cinder cones and lava. Santa Clara, where's Santa Clara? Do we have it on the map? Sorry. Oh my. Where's Santa Clara? Let's see. St. George. Anyway, somewhere south, as we said before. Um, so some of these, as you can see, are basically, uh, they're active. Active meaning one out of five. One out of five Santa Clara right there, okay. Um, and if we want to find out more about what that means, what's going on there, earthquakes in the Intermountain Seismic Belt, southern Utah and vicinity. The Intermountain Seismic Belt is a prominent north-south trending zone of recorded seismicity. A modern catalog of instrumentally located earthquakes in Utah begins mid-1962, and historical earthquake records date back to 1850s, characterized by scattered seismicity with locally dense clusters of small to moderate-sized earthquakes, the largest in southern Utah, 6.5 in 1901. The faults, the uh, Intermountain Seismic Belt ISB in southern Utah, coincides with transition between east-west direct stretching of the basin and range to the west and more stable crust of the Colorado Plateau to the east, tectonic movement on generally north trending east and west dipping range, bounding normal faults which result in horizontal extension characterizes this part of Utah. The Sevier Valley is an area of variable complex deformation involving significant components of folding and both normal and strike slip faults. Okay, it's a basin and range area. As we can see here, where are we? to our map, it's stretching. This is area stretching. Uh, it's growing. Uh, I remember when I was talking about the Kuina Fault of the Great Lakes, we had seen the magma underneath the west and east coast, and that map did not show the magma underneath the Great Lakes. This um, western part goes this way here, down through uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, Arkansas, Texas, 
and then swings this way to the west, and the east, it's like a horseshoe shape, and then the eastern part goes along, along the New Madrid seismic zone, which should be called New Madrid Rift Zone. Uh, we know that that area is opened from Miss, uh, Mississippi River all the way down to Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, and then uh, St. Lawrence River. I used to live in Montreal, right there, St. Lawrence River. Uh, it's basically opened up to here, up to the right. This is a, a rift valley. At one point, this is going to break off, just like the Great Rift Valley in Africa, here. Here. Okay, that's magma underneath there, too, lakes and rivers. Uh, Madagascar was once a part of uh, Africa. That split off, as we can see here. Well, this part of uh, the eastern part is also going to uh, split off. And unfortunately, I don't know what's going to happen to the Nile River, because the Nile River uh, comes from there, from the mountains high up there. It travels all the way down here, as you can see, all the way down to the Nile Delta of Egypt. Okay, so this is what's going to happen to the Mississippi River or St. Lawrence Riverways and these lakes uh, when that happens. Well, of course, that'll be in you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, million years later. But uh, this is stretching, and there is magma under there. Just like there is magma here under the uh, Great Lakes, the horseshoe-shaped thing. And this is magma under there as well. Okay, so we just saw the volcanoes there, right here. Let's go back, back out again. Okay. There's, that's Salt Lake right there. And that's our magma right there, west and east, right along that fault line. Okay. So um, I just wanted to touch base with you there concerning these earthquakes. And um, let's see what's happening in Salton. Salton Sea, I don't think that has, it doesn't have that many earthquakes today. Oh, okay, it does. Well, okay. That's Salton Sea right there. But we have a lot more around Los Angeles, it looks like. A lot more around Los Angeles, even though they're small, I'm sure, but there's salt and sea right there. Uh, that, I, I don't like that, because this is, this is the kind of behavior we had before the Ridgecrest earthquake. And still going on, as you can see there, that fault line, that's on Walker Lane fault system. And um, that's going up north towards uh, where are we? I want to find, uh, I'm trying to find Long Valley Caldera, Owens Valley. Okay, Long Valley, there, there it is right there. That's a caldera, it's a super volcano. So all of you there, please be very careful um, because it's a subduction area. The Pacific plate subducting underneath the North American plate and pushing that magma uh, to the east as well there. And it's also a basin and range, it's stretching and growing. The earth is growing every year at the rate of a human fingernail. So you can understand, we do have earth changes every year, even though they're minimal. But uh, this is one of the biggest seismic areas, the largest seismic areas of the world, the west coast of the United States, as we can see here. Okay, there we go. So all of you, be careful, and thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.